Hey everyone, today I wanted to uh, put a quick video together to talk about um, some guitar doubling in a rock track. Um, the end result really trying to just get bigger, wider, thicker guitars. And uh, I've been doing it wrong for a long time, so this is kind of uh, the way that I started doing it, which is nothing new. I think everybody's been kind of doing it this way anyway, but I uh, just want to kind of sh run through how I did it. You can see how it sounds and uh, hopefully you get something out of it. So a little bit about this track. Uh, this is pretty much a straightforward rock tune that uh, my band recorded probably about 15 years ago. Um, sort of a Foo Fighters vibe to it. There's two guitar players in the band, myself and one other guy. And uh, we, you know, we never finished these recordings. We got them in a hard drive and kind of forgot about them. So recently I just pulled them back up and thought it'd be kind of fun to replay some of my parts and, um, you know, see how I can mix them. So right now this isn't mixed. This is just basically the raw tracks. But um, I'm going to go and, you know, do a full mix on these after I finish kind of tracking and editing. But um, when I started listening back to the original guitar tracks, um, you know, everything sounded okay, but I just thought it could be done um, better now. And um, I wanted to replay my parts. And, and again, I was trying to go for a thicker, wider, bigger guitar sound. I'll play a little bit of the track as it stands right now. Um, you can see I, I have some amp sims in here, which are turned off right now, but I'll explain why they're there. And, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of main guitar parts. This is the other guitar player's part, which um, we did not retract. This is the original recording. And uh, these are my new guitar parts that I retract, which I recorded through an amp sim and then reamped the direct line into new amps. So I have two uh, sort of dirty guitar parts. One is a main guitar and then it, I, I doubled it, and then um, there's a clean guitar part in the bridge. So uh, let me just play a little bit of the track. Um, we'll start with the intro, I'll skip to the chorus, and then um, if you like it want to stick around for more, I'll walk you through how I did it. So here we go, here's the intro. So this is the original guitar recorded. Then my new guitar parts come in. The one section for now. And then as it builds, when the band kicks in, I'm going to double it with the other guitar. You kind of hear now some of the width and the thickness. And as far as the playing goes, the arrangement is an exact double just played two different times. Alright, so that's kind of the intro getting the verse. I'll play the chorus part. So in the chorus we have the main guitar, my main part, and then I have it doubled. And then an overdub comes in. All right, so that's the general feel for the track, the overall vibe. Again, kind of a straight up rock song. And um, so the whole idea with doubling for me, which I kind of figured out, is when I originally when I used to double guitar tracks, um, I didn't switch anything up on the double. And for me, in order to achieve a wider, thicker guitar sound, the secret to that is having variation between the original and what you're doubling. And by variation, I don't mean necessarily the playing, um, cause you're never going to play it exactly note for note the same way, but that's a good thing. Cause a little bit of difference is going to give it more separation with, um, but what I mean is I played the original track, recorded it one way. And then for the double, I played the same exact thing, same spot, same inversions, same riffs, but I changed up the guitar, I changed up the guitar pick, I changed up the amp and the microphones and how I recorded it. And all those little nuances and differences are going to give you a slightly different tone. And that's what you want, because the more difference you have in the tone, um, the more separation and width that you're going to get. Um, another thing to mention is um, you see two tracks together, but these are basically being blended as one. Um, because I had two mics on the guitar amp. So 
for the one take I had an SM57 um, pretty much like a little bit off the center of the cone on the amp and um, at the same time I had a Royer 121 uh, right next to it and I'll single out these different mics in a bit so you can hear the difference in how they sound but um but they're basically blended together as as one I'm treating it as one source one track then again for the double um, I swapped out the 57 for Sennheiser 421 and I kept the Royer 121 and I slightly moved the position. So again, just getting a little bit that, more of that variation for more width and for more difference. Um, one of the things I used to do um, when I double mic'd an amp is for whatever reason, I thought like, okay, I'm putting two mics on the amp. I'm going to pan those to separate areas. And you could do that. There's nothing wrong with that, but you're essentially taking one the same exact source recorded with two microphones and you're splitting it and then I would double track it and then I would kind of pan those again in a different spot but you'll see I'll play it for you in a minute that's not going to give you the real width that you need and you're probably going to run into some phasing issues as well as long as you track it in phase and when you're tracking it with you know more than one mic and a source you really need to check phase to make sure that those two um, two mics on the same source or more are in phase before you blend them to one because um, what I'm actually going to do is before I mix I'm probably going to bust these to a single track and print it together as one track so that I can EQ it as one source right now they're split up as two mics but again it is the same source so these were in fact in phase I checked them made sure when I recorded them and they're panned at the same spot and for me that's the key because it, again you're blending them to one spot as if it's one source so they're both essentially panned exactly the same spot same as the double so I have the main track panned hard left and then the double again with two mics blended as the same source panned to the other spot and that's going to give you the full width that you're looking for so I'll play you a little bit of that let's go to the chorus again I'll first solo out just the the guitar part So this is just the SM57 and the Royer 121 blended together. So it sounds okay. You might be thinking like, that ah, doesn't sound so great on its own. It's a little, uh, you know, mid-rangey, a little scoop sounding. But that's okay because what I want it to do is work with the other double that I created and I want it to sound a little bit different. So now here's the double using different guitar, different mics, different uh, settings on the amp and pedals. So this has a different tone altogether. It's a little bit thicker, a little less nasally sounding. And if I were to choose one, I would probably go with this one just on its own. But when you add the double in and play them together, to my ear, they work together nicely and balance each other out. If they were too similar, you wouldn't get as much uh, width and separation. Okay, so now let's just hear the individual mics on the same part. So now this is just the SM57. And it kind of sounds, you know, maybe a little bit thin on its own. All right, so same source, same amp, same settings. This is just the Royer 121. So the Royer is definitely a little bit darker, a little bit thicker. And then when you add it together with the SM57, again, they kind of work together in a nice way where the SM57, I feel like, sort of sits a little bit on top of the Royer. You know, the Royer fills out a little bit of the darker mid-range, and the SM57 is that upper mid-range. So together... Just the Royer. Just the SM57 together. So again, they complement one another, they thicken out the sound, and, and again, they're going to be blended together as one source and one track. So now, let's hear how the other mics sound. Um, so for the original one, I played Les Paul, um, played it through my Sir Corso head, using just the amp gain settings, no pedals. And then for the second double track, I switched the guitar out. Um, I believe I played 
it was a telly and uh, switch the pick a little bit of a different weight on the pick instead of using I use the same amp actually same cabinet um, but instead of using the gain on the amp head I used uh, just a pedal um, so here is how just the um, Here's just how the Sennheiser 421 sounds on the cabinet. So I like that on its own. I mean, it has a nice crunch to it. Um, doesn't sound too nasally or mid-rangey to me. Um, here's just the Royer 121. Again, you get a little bit of that darker mid-range, a little bit thick, thicker. Add the 421 to it. Together, I think they sound really nice. There's a really nice, sort of a crunchy gain sound to it. Again, I'm going to bounce those down together, print them in one track, and then I can kind of EQ it as one track, EQ the other guitar part as one track. So those are um, essentially the doubles on their own. Now I'm going to play you the amp sims. So the reason why I had the amp sims is because um, when I was retracking my parts, it's just easier for me to plug directly in to the computer rather than worrying about the amp and dialing up the tone and everything. So I'll play direct, get a nice direct signal, get all my performances the way that I want them. And then I can spend time reamping and dialing different tones and kind of, you know, switching my hats so I don't have to worry about too much at once. I'm sure this is the way a lot of people do it. Um, so the amp sim, sim on its own. Um, I was just using um, the scuff, one of the Scuffman uh, amp sims, and you know it wasn't really like I was trying to compete to see if I can get a better sound with an amp. I just kind of dialed in a quick crunchy, crunchy tone on its own. I think amp sims sound great. Um, you don't have to reamp. You know, so the, you can dial these in to get them to sound you know exactly the way you want them. You know, I just prefer to to kind of see what I can get with an amp. So here's just the amp sim on its own. Okay, so nothing wrong with that, but here's the same exact performance that I reamped. That's the amps. That's the amp sim. Amp sim. Amps. So they probably need to be level matched a little bit to uh, to equal it out, but um, you know, just in this comparison again I didn't really dial the amp sim in um, but to me it just sounds a little bit thinner it's lacking a little bit of life to me the real amps in this case um, I recorded them with some tape saturation um, and you know no EQ but uh, probably some preamp uh, saturation so it just sounds thicker to me a little bit more real life a little bit more 3d um, on that part so let me play you the next amp sim um, for the double Again, I dialed in a little bit of a different tone here. Wasn't really trying to go for anything specific, just needed to track my performance. Okay, so now here's the amps. After reamping it. Again, just a little bit more life, a little bit more girth to it. It's the amps. That's the amp sim. Amps. Alright, so. There you hear the difference between the amp sims and, and the mic'd amps. Um, the only other part I have here is on the bridge. There's kind of a clean overdub guitar part, so we'll skip to that. I'll first play you just the amp sim. For this, I'm just kind of playing through a Fender clean tone with amplitude. Pretty straightforward. Here's the reamp. Again, I, I put... Um, Two different mics on the amp to record this part so that's why you're seeing two tracks here i use a little bit of a, a delay pedal and a little tiny bit of a pushed clean on the amp itself so that's the amp that's the amp sim that's the amp so a lot more life a lot more 3d to the amp sound again i didn't really level match or dial it in on the amp sims nothing wrong with amp sims they sound great um i just felt like reamping because uh, i had some extra time in my hands all right so 
that is basically um, guitar doubling technique. Again, the key for me is variation in performance. You know, so when you're going to double something, switch up the guitar, switch up your pick, switch up the settings on the amp, gain pedal, just switch a cable if you need to. Do as much as you can to create some of that variation to get with. And again, if you're double micing an amp using more than one mic to grab the source, A, make sure they're in phase um, so you don't get any weird phase issues. Um, and also just watch where you're panning them. Um, in my mind, I'm thinking of it as even though there's two microphones, you're picking up the same source. So essentially, you, you know, you can print it to one track or one fader and you treat it as one. Um, let me just play you the difference between having the two separate uh, mics panned, you know, to one spot and then we'll pan them kind of separately. And I'll show you the, the way that I, I did it previously and you see the, the huge difference in width that you get. So this is with the two mics panned to the same spot. Okay, so those two mics are in phase and they're pan panned hard left. Okay, so now I'm going to separate them. I'm just going to pan them opposite. So one left, one right. And that kind of sounds very mono because you're taking the same source and you're splitting it. Okay, so there's not much variation in that. So now the way I used to do it um, is... I would pan these this way, even though they're the same source. And then when I brought the double in, so we'll pull up this double here, and then I would, I would for whatever reason, pan them, you know, let's say a little bit in like this. All right, so now I'll play this back for you. So here you have the double and the original playing at the same time, but because of the way they're panned, you're not getting the width. and kind of sounds weird and phasey and almost mono-y to me. So let's hear that again. All right, now I'm going to put them back hard left and right, being careful to pan the mics from the same sources to exactly the same spot. Now listen to this. What a difference. It's so much wider and more separated. I don't hear any phasey issues happening. Now with the track. So that's basically it. Pretty simple technique for guitar doubling. A couple things to keep in mind. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to get a bigger a uh, wider, thicker guitar sound out of that, and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.